end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. All right? If, verse 14, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. But on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let it not be, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Mm. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them? that obey not the gospel. Wow. If the righteous scarcely be saved, what shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Wherefore, let him that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing as unto a faithful creator. Now, what I want to say about that is we are going, I mean, we've already entered some very precarious times. As the Bible says, we are in the last days. And we have to be very careful about the choices we make, about the decisions we make, how we go about doing things. And we have to know that there are going to be some tough decisions that could place us in a very scary position, <clears throat> in a very scary uh, stance in our lives. We may not know if the money will keep going. We may not know if we will continue to get this, that, or the other, or if our family members might turn their backs on us and write us off as cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. So there may be times when our feelings get hurt. And there, that is part of not only knowing Christ and the power of his resurrection, but knowing him and the fellowship of his suffering. We will be mocked at times. There will be those that watch from a distance and respect us highly, and they will want to know the God we make a stand for. But there will be many more that will ignore us, that will turn a deaf ear, that will look at us out the corner of our eye, of their eye like we have lost all our marbles. And they will not want to hear what comes out of your mouth. They will not want to hear what's on your heart. They won't care because they're not interested in the things of God. They're not interested. They're not watching. They're not listening. They're like, whatever. They want to go out and play. They want to live in recess. You know, in elementary school, we'd have class, 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 and then recess time, playtime. Well, that's the way a lot of adults are right now. They want to live in a period of recess, but this isn't that season. And you're going to see a lot of people that would rather eat, drink, and be merry, that would rather turn a blind eye to all the writing on the wall. And the writing is on the wall, y'all. Now, I'm going to share 
Matt's <clears throat> testimony because I forgot to hit the record button like a dodo. Matt ha got fired from his job dealing with the big C. You know what the big C is? Yeah. And there was a shot he was supposed to get and he chose not to out of constant confirmations from God that told him no in so many words. So, as a result of making the stand for God, now he's got a choice of three or four other forms of income that will more than sufficiently supply he, his and his family's needs. God had his back. He didn't lose a... See, this is what I want to tell you. Many of you are going to be in positions where you have to make a decision, a snap decision, a split second choice. And your decision will determine whether you depend on the system to supply your needs or whether you depend on God to supply your needs. So I want you to think about the fact. Let me share this real quick. <clears throat> Uh, let's go back to the relational issues. I was over at a relative's house last night. I was picking up something they got for me. And they asked me the first thing out of their mouth. So did you get your, your, your V shot? No. no. I'm saying letters so the video doesn't get pulled down. No. Well, why didn't you? Uh, because when I prayed about it, God let me know it wasn't for me. Ah, uh, okay. Well, to each his own. I'm like, no. I didn't say it to them in my mind. I'm like, no, not to each his own. To God I trust, period. That's the bottom line. Man, no, I don't trust man. I don't trust man. I don't trust their lies. I don't trust their system of doing things. So what I want to share with you is there will be times when even your family won't want you to come around because you didn't get the big C. I mean, you didn't get the C shot. Yeah, you didn't get that. And the reason is because they trust the system. They're not thinking about God. But if you're God-minded and you're depending on God and God, if God has told you, no, you stick to that word, baby. Don't let a human being persuade you otherwise. Now, we're not calling it the mark. We're not calling it any of that. The bottom line is God knows our bodies more than we do, more than any doctor does. And God knows if it's going to do us more harm than good. In the long run, there are some of you that may lose your jobs. There are some of you that may lose friendships because they'll look at you like you have totally lost your mind. The heck is wrong with you? You think you all that in a bag of chips because you know God? whoop de do. Guess what? I'm getting mine. Well, go on, go right ahead and get it. But don't you dare let anybody's attitude or opinion swerve you and, and convince you to do what God has told you on the inner man. No, don't you dare. You better trust God in these last days. That's my point. That's basically the point of this whole message. If you want to leave, you can leave now because half y'all don't listen to the whole video anyway, according to YouTube. So what I want to share with you is that is the issue in these last days you're going to be in uncomfortable situations you may be in family settings check this out i'm seeing this play out of my mind so i believe god is letting me know don't be surprised if some of your family members that you thought were really in your corner start putting you on the spot and using you as a target for their cynicism and they may say, so, Larry, uh, what's up with you not getting the so-and-so? And everybody's sitting around the dinner table and all heads look at you. Think about that. And when they look at you, they're waiting for your response like they did when they tested Jesus. What you going to say? What you going to do? Right? 
and you're sitting there feeling like you got egg on your face, you're nervous because you know the spotlight is on you. You are literally, you have literally been placed on the spot right now. And now it's, do you speak up for God or do you compromise so you can eliminate having to go through all the verbal attacks, getting your feelings hurt? So what do you do? Do you speak up? Mm -hmm. See, some of you are going to be put in that situation. And you've got to have enough. I won't say that word, even in Spanish. You got to have enough courage. I'll be nice. To be able to make a stand for God. See, one thing you have to know, when you're willing to stand for God, God is more than willing to stand for you. When he makes a stand for you like he did for Matt, he'll vindicate you. Oh, yes, he will. He'll vindicate you. He'll vindicate you for deciding whatever your choice is for God's sake, not for your job's sake, for God's sake. All right. Now, the reason I can talk so authoritatively on that subject is because I, too, was fired years ago for choosing not to do something I thought was against God's will. Whether I was right or wrong, that's neither here nor there. It's the reason you do what you do. And I let them know the only reason I cannot do it is for God's sake. I must obey God rather than man. That was my, my line of thinking. So as a result, and that's what I said in essence to them, God was my reason for not doing what they wanted me to do. They let me come back to work that next Thursday so they could watch me waste that gas and time and see the look on my face when they let me know I was no longer needed with a smile at that. And I cried like a big baby all the way home. I said, Lord, I trust you, but that hurt. And that's why I was crying, not because they fired me. I was crying because it hurt. Why was I hurt? Because all the time I worked there, it felt like a, <clears throat> a cohesive unit. It was such unity. I worked for a senior home for the deaf. And I loved working there. I was learning more and more sign language. We were all getting along. All the employees, all the workers, the boss, everyone was doing great. Until I said no, for God's sake. And then all of a sudden, baby, I was villainized. Yes. <laughs> and I was condemned mm -hmm, to exile. And they exiled me, all right. That was the end of that. So what I'm trying to tell you is there are times where you will have to face the music, baby, for making a choice for God's sake. So what happened that following Friday? The very next morning, I wake up to a phone call. Uh, this is the Pasadena Unified School District. Would you like to come in on Monday and begin working? I end up with three times the hours and twice the amount of pay. God have my back. What are you going to do when you're put on the spot? When you're sitting at the di di dinner table and everybody's staring at you waiting for your response. What are you going to say on the job when you're sitting across the office desk of your boss? And your boss says, I need you to do this. This is not, this is not a matter of choice. This is an order. What are you going to do when they put the money on the line? I mean, they put their demand on the line and you have been given no choice by man. Are you going to take the choice that you have been given by God? Or are you going to do what they told you to do? You have no choice. Listen, baby, let me tell you this. You always have a choice. Always have a choice. I don't care what choice they take away from you. I don't care what rights they, 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 they strip you of. You always have a choice. Choose you this day. If God tells you no, guess what? 
You better go with what God says. Trust God rather than man. Obey God rather than man. And on that note, we are going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting at verse 9. But as it is written, I, that's the I right here, have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Mm. <laughs> but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. <clears throat> for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit, of man. Now, I'm going to say it in everyday language. For what man knows the things of man except for the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man except for the spirit of God. <clears throat> now we have received not the spirit of this world, of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words <clears throat> which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness. And guess what? You're going to look like a fool too in a whole lot of people's eyes when you make a stand for God. He tells you A and you tell them A and they tell you no, you're supposed to go B, C, D, E, F and you say no, but God said A. They're going to say you a fool. Stupid idiot. What the heck she talking about? What the heck is he doing? He's got a family to support. How stupid. You're just going to throw it all away? On some little simple, you know, some little silly uh, thing you think you heard from Almighty God. Oh, they'll, they'll put you down, baby. People can hurt your feelings. They can make you feel dumb even when you know you're right. <laughs> All right, let me read that verse again. Mm, mm, mm. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Listen, you may not understand why God said some things to you. You may not understand why God is restraining you from doing what everybody else is doing. What only makes sense to do. You may not understand it. But God knows the workings of every organ in your body. He knows the workings of the particular vaccines. What it, well, I think it's late in the video, so hopefully they won't catch that. He knows the workings of all of the stuff, the chemical compounds, all the stuff that's in it. But listen to this. If he tells you no, there may be an even deeper reason. There was something on the news yesterday about phony V's being sent out, I believe, from Canada and Mexico. And they were not what people thought they were getting in their bloodstream. 
Yeah, they sat there trustingly and got that big V shot in their arm, only to find out that it was not what they went to get shot in their arm at all. It was some other imitation complex that they put in that vaccine. So God knows why we have to be careful. He knows what may be tainted. He knows what area might be in danger and you might be in that area. He knows what, what latent problems might wake up one decade down the road and it would never have happened to you had you not taken that you know what. So it's not to tell you to or not to. That's between you and God. What I'm trying to say is whatever God tells you, don't do what God tells you not to do. That's the thing you got to remember. Trust God rather than trusting man. Trust God rather than trust the system. Trust God rather than trust man's wisdom. Man's wisdom makes a lot of sense, y'all. It only sounds logical. It, come on now, right? Only an idiot would miss it. But let me tell you, baby cakes, if God says, do not trust this or do not trust that, there will be other things coming down the road, coming down the pipe. And you will have to make a decision whether to do this or whether to do that. Two, <clears throat> two years ago, we were already hearing about mandatory this and mandatory that, and there were nurses that went online and explained how they got fired because they were told by God not to. They chose to obey God rather than man, and they were fired. They were crying, just like I cried when I was fired. But the reason, see, it hurts when you have given your heart to any institution and you're not just working for a paycheck, you're also working out of love. See, that stuff hurts. And that's what I'm trying to prepare you for. In these last days, many of you will be hurt by the people closest to you and you won't understand what's going on. In some cases, God is trying to show you things that are going wrong in you. In other cases, God is trying to steer you away from things that are wrong in other people. In other cases, either way, no matter what God is doing, it is under a protection. He's trying to protect his babies. He even tries to protect us from ourselves. So if God tells you yay, Fine. If God tells you nay, you better not. That's all I'm trying to say. If God cautions you, if God warns you, if God quickens you, puts an uneasy feeling in you, better not go against that feeling to save a job. Oh, you better not. You better not go against that feeling to save a marriage. I'm telling you. And you better not go against that feeling to save your relationships with your friends and family. Don't you dare put people before God. Don't you dare put a paycheck before God. Don't you dare put your reputation before God. Don't you put anything before God because you will not have his backing. Now, for those of you who do whatever you do in faith, whatever decisions you make, you make in faith after praying with God, then fine. God's got your back. This is not an either or. This is just making you aware that there will be consequences for doing what God said not to do, and there will be consequences for doing what God said to do. Either way, there will be consequences. So I just want you to know, I just want you to know, God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. You hear me? 
He's with you every step of the way. He's with you every step of the way. So know that God, his love, will never take you where his power cannot sustain you. Do you hear me? God will never take you where his power cannot sustain you. All right. So my question to you is, what choices will you make now? Are you a secret agent for the Lord? Undercover agent? Nobody knew you were a Christian till they heard it through the grapevine. Right. Are you that kind of person? Are you the person that wants to keep peace? At all costs. You ain't going to use the name Jesus. Because you know that's offensive in today's society. Really. You don't want to offend. Isn't that nice of you? God doesn't like it. But people will love you for it. So my, my question to you. See, this is all, all, this channel, this ministry, God's Church of Love Online, it's all about Jesus Christ. We make no bones about it. We will not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I know I won't. Let me just speak for myself. I will not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. If the government decides that they want to shut down Anybody that uses that name, anybody that stands for him, anybody that believes in him, anybody that ministers about him. Well, then I'm just going to have to look to my Savior to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Years ago, God specifically instructed me to go to cosmetology school. I was seeking him for direction, and I was not happy with the answer he gave me. I wanted a glorious position doing art illustration, graphic arts, computer graphics. I wanted something really big, you know, with a big name, with a big reputation, with big, you know, almighty dollars attached to it. Something that stro stroked my pride, too, a little bit, too. Now. When he said cosmetology, I was never impressed by that as, a, as an occupation. To me, standing up dealing with a bunch of moody women was not exactly my idea of, of having a career. So I said, Lord, <laughs> if this is really you, I need a sign. I really need encouragement. I need, and I, I put my little sign out there. He gave me my answer, boom. It was, it was beyond a shadow of a doubt. I knew I was in my element and I stuck with it. But this is what I had to do in order to do that. I had just been hired by Pasadena Unified, Pasadena City College as an interpreter for the deaf in lightweight issues, not someone that uh, dealt with chemistry and history. I didn't have that kind of vocabulary. So they put me in the art class, drama class, gym, or whatever. Easy stuff. Okay, so yeah, my skills weren't that great, but it was enough to get me by. So I got hired. I went through all the different rigmarole you have to go through to get the job signed, sealed, and delivered. And all I had to do was go to my first assignment, which was two weeks away. I was scheduled. Everything was worked out because I had applied before I heard from God talk about the cosmetology thing. So when the Lord reinforced that, I said, um, I had to go to the lady and I had to let her know that I was instructed to go in another direction. And I didn't know until recently, so that's the reason she wasn't getting the answer. And she was not happy. He even tries to protect us 
from ourselves. So if God tells you yay, fine. If God tells you nay, you better not. That's all I'm trying to say. If God cautions you, if God warns you, if God quickens you, puts an uneasy feeling in you, better not go against that feeling to save a job. Oh, you better not. You better not go against that feeling to save a marriage. I'm telling you. And you better not go against that feeling to save your relationships with your friends and family. Don't you dare put people before God. Don't you dare put a paycheck before God. Don't you dare put your reputation before God. Don't you put anything before God. Because you will not have his backing. Now for those of you who do whatever you do in faith, whatever decisions you make, you make in faith after praying with God, then fine. God's got your back. This is not an either or. This is just making you aware that there will be consequences for doing what God said not to do, and there will be consequences for doing what God said to do. Either way, there will be consequences. So I just want you to know I just want you to know God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. You hear me? He's with you every step of the way. He's with you every step of the way. So know that God his love will never take you where his power cannot sustain you. Do you hear me? God will never take you where his power cannot sustain you. All right. So my question to you is, what choices will you make now? Are you a secret agent for the Lord? Undercover agent? Nobody knew you were a Christian till they heard it through the grapevine. Right. Are you that kind of person? Are you the person that wants to keep peace at all costs? You ain't going to use the name Jesus because you know that's offensive in today's society. Really? You don't want to offend. Isn't that nice of you? God doesn't like it, but people will love you for it. So my, my question to you. See, this is all, all, this channel, this ministry, God's Church of Love Online. It's all about Jesus Christ. We make no bones about it. We will not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I know I won't. Let me just speak for myself. I will not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. If the government decides that they want to shut down anybody that uses that name, anybody that stands for him, anybody that believes in him, anybody that ministers about him, well, then I'm just going to have to look to my Savior to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Years ago, God specifically instructed me to go to cosmetology school. I was seeking him for direction, and I was not happy with the answer he gave me. I wanted a glorious position doing art illustration, graphic arts, computer graphics. I wanted something really big, you know, with a big name, with a big reputation, with big, you know, almighty dollars attached to it. Something that stro stroked my pride, too, a little bit, too. Now... When he said cosmetology, 
I was never impressed by that as a as an occupation. To me, standing up dealing with a bunch of moody women was not exactly my idea of of having a career. So I said, Lord, <laughs> if this is really you, I need a sign. I really need encouragement. I need and I, I put my little sign out there. He gave me my answer, boom. It was it was beyond a shadow of a doubt. I knew I was in my element and I stuck with it. But this is what I had to do in order to do that. I had just been hired by Pasadena Unified, Pasadena City College as an interpreter for the deaf in lightweight issues, not someone that uh, dealt with chemistry and history. I didn't have that kind of vocabulary. So they put me in the art class, drama class, gym, or whatever. Easy stuff. Okay. So, yeah, my skills weren't that great, but it was enough to get me by. So I got hired. I went through all the different rigmarole you have to go through to get the job signed, sealed, and delivered. And all I had to do was go to my first assignment, which was two weeks away. I was scheduled. Everything was worked out. Because I had applied before I heard from God talk about the cosmetology thing. So when the Lord reinforced that, I said, um, I had to go to the lady and I had to let her know that I was instructed to go in another direction. And I didn't know until recently, so that's the reason she wasn't getting the answer. And she was not happy, y'all. Now, if I wanted to be a people pleaser, I would have put off cosmetology for six months and at least work for them for half a year so that her, all that effort would not have been wasted. But God told me cosmetology, not interpreter for the deaf. So I had to let her know the reason I'm doing this is because I was instructed by God and I couldn't go against it. Well, I didn't get arrested. I didn't get beaten up. I didn't have a contract out on my life. Somebody just wasn't a happy camper because of my choice. But God blessed me big time because no matter what I do, when God, when God instructs me to do this, that, or the other, or not to do this, that, or the other, when I give my reason for my decisions and my choices, I always let people know whether they are believers or whether they're not. God is the one that pulls my reins. He's the one that controls my life. He's the one that sets my destiny in place, not me. So my question to you is, do you really stand for God or is God kind of on the back burner? Because this is the scary part. When you put God on the back burner, even though you may let a few people know you know him, when you put him on the back burner, he's not the one you go to when you need an answer. He's not the one you go to when you need tears wiped from your eyes. He's not the one you give credit to when you do something well. He's not the one that gets the glory when you get blessed in front of everybody. He's not the one then guess what? When your back's up against the wall, there are times when God is not right there on the money. Sometimes we get the same treatment from him that we give to him. Just to let us know how it feels, not to be spiteful, to teach us a lesson. God first at all times. Now, we all fall short of that, including me. You know, none of us do that in excellence except Jesus. But we're found trying. Some of the Christians I've known down through the decades, I can tell you to this day, they walk in the, in the proclamation of salvation but when it comes to life and its vicissitudes, 
And, you know, you might get a pray for me here and there. But you don't get the person totally depending on God more than anyone else. Putting God first in everything more than anyone else or anything else. And their life reflects it. If you're in a marriage, and I'm going to cut it short, if you're in a marriage and your, your loved one, your spouse, your mate, your husband, your wife knows that they know that they know that they are number one in the human factor, God is number one for both of you. But if your mate knows that you are, that they are number one in your heart, you don't have jealousy issues. They're not walking behind you with a magnifying glass and a and a a, a, a hearing a hearing uh, apparatus up against the wall to eavesdrop on what you're saying to see who you're talking to because they don't trust you. No, when they're convinced that they are in your heart, there is no trust issue. There is no suspicion. There is no jealousy. There's no need for it. Do you hear what I'm saying? So when you're in that kind of a trusting position, both husband and wife are able to give their all. They don't hold back. They give it all because they know that they can trust the one they're giving it to. Imagine how much more with God when he knows he's got all of you, not in perfection, but in a perfect effort. He's got all of you. He's got your love. He's got your reverence. The fear of the Lord is the begin beginning of wisdom. He's got your commitment. He's got your ear. He's got your heart. When, he, when they know, when God knows that he's got us like that, guess what? We have more than that of him. He is for us in so many ways. That's when that scripture comes into play. I has not seen, neither ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. Do you love him to that extent, y'all? Mm, where he, he takes, he has an exhilarance in being a blessing to your life. He's excited about coming up with ways to surprise you and bountifully shower you with his love, with his demonstration of love, blessings, and favor. Or is he holding back like the spouse that holds back because they know they don't have all of you? They know you're not all there for them. You're not all in it. No, you're not all in it because you got other priorities that are even above them. Your job might be above them. Your friendships and social circles might be above them. They might feel like they're at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to your list of priorities. And it's not a good thing if you have God feeling like he's at the bottom of your totem pole, even though you call yourself, quote, a Christian. And I'm done. So be excited for what he has for you. Those of you who are committed at all costs, be excited. Because God's letting you know you got some rewards coming. But while the rewards are on their way to you, there will also be some pitfalls, some pimples, some dips, some cracks, some crevices. There will be some mishaps. Why? Because the world wants to punish you while God is blessing you. So don't let your feelings get hurt. You start going that way, God, take the hurt out. Just ask him, take the hurt out because I know you have my best interest at heart. They do not. Amen? Amen. I'm done.